Okay, welcome to this uh, short video on the Synthesis TX81Z or TX81Z editor. Um, what we've got basically here is the voice parameters laid out on this first uh, tab. Uh, we do our MIDI setup here of our ports and channels. I've already done it, so I'll just click OK. We have a help button here, which will just give us a general overview of what we're looking at. And in the certain sections, you've got little help icons here, which will give you more detailed description of what's going on in that particular section, which is quite helpful. Um, we can select patches. We've got the uh, what is a representation of the hardware buttons on the front here. So we can step through patches like this with the deck and ink and or use the parameters to go up and down banks like so. And back down again. And we've got a MIDI keyboard. So we can preview our sounds. Um, we'll do a little bit of editing, I think. So if we do initialize, if we initialize this patch just like this, we'll end up with just basically a sine wave, I think. Yeah, because we've only got operator one active. So if we just sort of bring up operator two slowly, you'll see that the wave increases in intensity, intensity, and this connection here, this as it's modulating operator one, that increases as well as we move it. So you'll see that as we move up operator 3, increase the level there, increase the level of operator 4 as well, like so. And now we've got all four operators doing something. Uh, well, we have also have a little bit of operator 4 feedback as well. You'll see that gets visual representation in there. You can switch these operators off just to see what they're doing. And then back on again, like that, so. We can uh, alter the envelope. We've got to alter the waves as well. If you cycle through the different wave shapes you can have for different operators, you'll get a nice representation of what they are. We'll stick with sine waves for now. We'll just alter this envelope here, I think, on operator 1. Um, TX81Z has a slightly more complicated envelope than... Um, an ADSR, it's got like two rates basically D1R and D2R, which gives you a slightly more complicated uh, form, but uh, so you've, got, you've got a nice visual, visual representation there of what you're doing anyway. And see, we're not, our envelopes aren't synced, so we're getting a strange effect there. See so if we can quickly copy the envelope settings from 1 to 2, and from 1 to 3, and from 1 to 4, and then something that's a bit more musical sounding or, or at least together anyway um, there you go so sort of basic editing in the voice section if we move to the performance mode okay here we got uh, basically you've got eight voice slots um, first thing you probably want to we've got help functions as well of course to explain various different things um, probably the first thing you want to do is just sync your internal voice names so I, in the editor, we don't know what um, we won't know what your um, internal voices are called. So it helps just to do that first, and that way, when we do an initialization here, we'll just quickly do one. We'll give that one note. We'll give that one note. When we start picking out internal memories here, we'll get we'll actually get the names displayed in here, rather than just I O ten, I ten, whatever. And we slightly detune that. We could sort of do a sort of unison type thing with the Grizz bass. Um, uh, you can set note limits for kind of splitting the keyboard and stuff, and, and it's all in the uh, all in the help files anyway. Okay, we'll move on to the system. That's kind of your basic. Um, you can retrieve the system setup, um, change various things in here. Um, again. The, the help buttons here will help describe exactly what you're seeing. Uh, we go to effects. You've got a one delay, one pan, and one chord group on a TX81Z. Uh, you can set up to four notes to play back on one key press. And you have to go and assign that in the performance mode. Otherwise, it doesn't work in the voice mode, but it works in the performance mode. You can select those different effects. Then we go into the microtune section. And uh, we'll just hang on, we'll just do that and go back into the microtune section. 
Okay, so um, normally I'd I'd leave things on equal temperament to be honest, but you can you can select various different keys and different um, scales for um, micro tuning if you're into that sort of thing. Usually I just use it on equal temperament myself, but it's all available there for if you want it. Uh, program change table again if you're selecting things via program change messages you might want to change stuff in here in the program change table otherwise just leave it alone looks like I changed something earlier there put that back to IO1 and then into the librarian section okay this is uh, slightly more complicated in here so if you've got a if you've got a voice for instance uh, you quite like the sound of that if you want to save that, just go into the librarian and save patch to disk. And you can save individual patches. Just cancel that. Yeah, it'll save. Sorry, you didn't save it. That's just got to press cancel. Uh, take that out. Uh, same with the performance. If you like a performance that you quite like, you can just go in here and save performance to disk. Um, but what you can also do is if you get your internal voices, it will load in the internal voices from your hardware. You can then save that voice bank to disk. So you can back up your internal voices to disk like that. Yeah, I'll say that again. If you get the performances out of your machine, again, you can save the performance bank disk and you back up your performances. And likewise, you can load things back in the same way. This this voice bank here and this performance bank here, they are, they're separate memory storage areas from the hardware itself. They're just like a temporary storage area where you can put banks and select things. So if we go, where have I put them? Let's have a quick look. If we go into, where are we? I think somewhere down the bottom. Yeah, if we go in here. So here's here's the TX81 factory banks or the sorry, this is this is a bank. So if I double click on this bank here that I've got stored on my hard drive it gets loaded into this temporary voice bank here and then we can double click on that and we go in the voice bank and then we've got a preview of that particular and we'll have a preview of that one let's see what that one sounds like we'll try another one And that way you can just preview banks that you've got on your hard drive and likewise with the performances. Um, so and that's the librarian. So that's okay. That's basically the standalone editor and we'll move on now to the door plugins. Right, here we are in the door. Um, right, the first thing we need to do is um, the plugin is going to need its own MIDI input and output ports. So I'm going to go into Cakewalk by Band Lab in this case, and I'm going to deselect those ports in the preferences. It's shared by anything. So we now insert the VS1. Well, in this case, it's a VST2, but there are VST3 and AU versions available. So it should be work fine in um, most doors on PC and Mac. And we'll just insert it in. Let it load. Okay, there it is. Uh, we just need to go into the MIDI settings and set it to those MIDI ports that we just freed up just a few seconds ago. And then the last one's there. Okay, okay, right. So if we I think we should be synced up now. If we, uh, I've got a bass track. Oops, I've got a bass track here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to point the output of that MIDI track to the plugin. So we're going to play the MIDI notes through the plugin, just like so, and then we can alter things as we go along, just like that. 
Okay, and well, the whole point of being in the plug-in environment rather than a standalone is the one big advantage and the main reason for using it, of course, is that we can automate things. So if we go TX81Z editor, choose parameter, yeah, we'll automate that operator floor level, like so. Let's move this out of the way so you can see what's going on. And then I'll just uh, we'll just draw in draw in some slow modulation of the operator for parameter and then we'll just uh, set it going again and you can see there the operator for level going up and down with the automate automation lane like that. Well, there you go, that's, uh, that's how you can operate it in the door environment. Thanks for watching.